Hey guys, so for today I thought I might try out a new Linux distribution, one that I have never tried before out in a virtual machine and just have a bit of a play around with it as I often like to do from time to time. Today I have been taking a look at AntiX. It's been around a while, in fact if you scroll down the DistroWatch page you will see that it's uh, it's had more than a few releases here, so it's been around the block a few times. It says here that it is based on Debian Stable, but that is, I guess, um, not entirely true because you can also have the distribution based on Debian Testing and Debian Unstable, as um, uh, or those were at least the options available in the installer. Uh, the installer itself was actually really good and really straightforward. It was for someone who's like an intermediate Linux user, someone that knows the terminology and the nomenclature, uh, you will very much be comfortable to install um, AntiX on your system or at least on a virtual machine as well. Um, but newer users or users coming across the windows might not necessarily know what to do, where to put the grub, for example. It asks you where you want your, your bootloader. Uh, it'll ask you how you want to partition your hard drive. And there are sort of preset options, but you're going to need to know what those preset options do. And, and again, if you're not used to partitioning drives and that kind of stuff, then you might be a little bit uh, confused. But that being said, they have a wiki and um, and, and, and should be able to, to walk you through the process through with that. But also, this isn't necessarily designed as a newbie-friendly distribution. Even though I sort of um, look at Linux distributions and, and, and see how they would affect sort of an everyday Linux user, how they would affect a, someone coming across from Windows, or how they would affect, you know, how, how someone who would just happen to pick up a Linux computer sort of interact with it. Um, but this is very much designed for people already comfortable with Linux, already know what they want, already want something fast, snappy, responsive. And, and and this is it. This is basically um, a Debian build with various lightweight man um, window managers. You've got Fluxbox, Ice, uh, Fluxbox, IceWM, which I believe is the default. That was the one that it just booted into and the, the one you can see now. Uh, JWM, another lightweight one. And XFCE. Um, but I would guess that you would have to um, install that one separately, am I right? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, there are some, yeah, no, yeah. So if you wanted XFCE4, uh, you would probably have to install it. As you can see, it comes with the Snapdick package manager, which is, you know, one of the all time good package managers. Uh, very, very functional. Somewhat user, I, see the trouble is now, I feel like I've been using Linux too long to really know what's user friendly for people that don't traditionally use Linux because uh, these are packages, you know, it's not, there is a distinct difference between a software manager and a package manager, a software manager won't have, for example, uh, you know, something like LX task in there. Um, it won't have libraries in there as well. So there is some sort of confusion. But um, ever since I began using Linux, I've always used uh, Synaptic Package Manager or similar such package managers with pretty much zero error. So, um, but then again, I've always been comfortable and enthusiastic to learn. I think that, again, is another important attribute here. I've had a look at how Qt and GTK applications. Now, there, even uh, on install, there are like the Rocks file manager, I believe, is is um, built against GTK3. But there are many other, pro well, I believe even Firefox. Is Firefox still built against GTK2? Um, and there are plenty of other GTK2 built apps. So that's kind of, uh, it's interesting. And the theming between the GTK2 and the GTK3 apps uh, is somewhat consistent, but it's not um you know, completely matching themes. So I, th I think one thing that is particularly important about this distribution is, unless you're willing to put in a significant amount of legwork, this is not going to be the nicest looking distribution. This is going to be, I'm not saying it's ugly or nothing like that, but um, it, it, it does look dated in places. The, this is, a, for example, a QT4 application, I believe. This is built against QT4. Um, I don't think it says here. But just, yeah, you, you know, you'll just take my word for it. This is built against Qt4. Uh, this looks fine. The menus on this look fine. The uh, icon theme looks like a KDE icon theme. So you've got that. But KeyPass X, that's one of my um, sort of tester applications that I that, that I um, that I use. Uh, this is the Ant AntiX control center. This is a really good control center. Again, looks a little dated um, with the theme and everything, but... And it's not an ugly, like I say, it looks dated, not ugly. There's, I think there's an important distinction here. But it's like nicely categorized, set, set up a printer, set, fo set font size, set default sound card, all of this stuff. Image a partition, partition a drive, configure auto mounting. 
Now, some of these, yeah, for example, like you won't see configure auto mounting in in something like GNOME or XFCE because uh, that's. But 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 it's nice that you know you've got control and it gives you easy control. Edit config files. Uh, yeah, you. What, one of the things you will notice about this as well is when when you sort of like edit config files, it will very much stick you into a um, a text editor and a uh, yeah something like this. So that is important to bear in mind. Is you know, it's not super like easy. You know everything's a GUI, everything's a wizard, everything's automatically done for you. But it it sticks you on the right trail in a really good way that that benefits people that are enthusiastic to learn but just need to be pointed in the right direction, um, or people that that already know what they want but aren't maybe comfortable with the command line or um oh well you know for, for for whatever reasons this seems to this seems to hit on a niche like i like this and i like the the thinking behind the people that have developed these applications the ui thinking it, everything here seems in a natural place uh, i've not actually had any bugs or errors so far as well uh, but then again this is a this is a quite a simple system if we're honest this is um stable debian with uh, ice wm on top of it with ro you know like rocks uh, file manager and it's 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 the safest option choice you can get but if you're looking for safe option choices uh certainly worth the look um i'm going to just throw up my criticism of antix right off the bat is that the website is is not amazing uh it's it seems to be just basically a wiki here um and it gives you the about, it gives you the news, it gives you the, the information is there and it's not really that difficult to find. I mean, you come into it, uh, welcome to Anti-X, about Anti-X, news, downloads, torrents. So even sort of like from a from a, a practical standpoint, the website's fine. It's like, okay, so I've just loaded up the, um, the Anti-X, you know, homepage. Hmm, how do I download a piece of software? Ooh, downloads, torrents, mirrors, down, you know, like it's, it's, it's right there in front of you. Ooh, what's this all about? Well, I'll just click on Antix. So don't get me wrong, like the, the functionality is fine. It's perfect, but it, it doesn't look, you know, it, 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 um, it, it, is, it, it doesn't look pretty all the time, if you know what I mean. And I think that's kind of running through the philosophy of Antix. It's like, get the job done, get the job done fast and get the job done well and don't care about looking pretty. You know, that's kind of, that seems to be, you know, th there, is, there, is a, uh, there is definitely a nod to, um, to aesthetics. Uh, for example, uh, if you go into the ISWM settings, look at all these themes. Like that is a significant number of themes. So, you know, I, I, I played around. Th there are a few themes. This is not the default theme. This is just one theme. This is... Yeah, uh, clear view orange small. It's a fine, you know. Uh, you will find that most most of these themes are like there aren't very many flat themes in there, and they will look probably the same that they did 15 years ago. So I'm just going to put that one out there. But again, if you want the job done and you want the job done fast, and 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 this is good enough in terms of the aesthetics for you, well, then it's good enough. So uh, Firefox works the same. Uh, it's the ESR version. Is that the one with additional security? I, I forget now. Um, it, it came with LibreOffice, and this is what LibreOffice looks like, which is fine. That fits in nicely with the uh, with the standard theming. Uh, the, yeah, I've uh, gone through the anti X control center. Oh, that's that's the how you edit the menu, which looks maybe a bit intimidating to those of you that don't um, aren't familiar with coding or whatever. Oh, and th is this the um, yeah, these are like the preferences, and uh, and uh, you can change the shortcut keys. What's in the tray? Oh wow! So I think I I selected um a settings. Yeah, edit um. Was it a edit JW edit? Uh, yeah, that's it. So I clicked on edit ice WM settings. Yeah, and it just threw up all the config files in this program, which I sh Gini, Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good. You know, see, see, this is that's kind of what I what I'm getting from Anti uh, X is it's like we're not going to provide you with a fancy GUI that will do everything for you, but we'll 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 provide you know the we'll we'll give you a straight direction to the config files and you can work it out from there. And config files, at least in my opinion, are just just as easy as as GUI once you get used to them. Just a different way of presenting information. Um, Synaptic package manager it comes you know that was that was here on install that's a good software choice there's like i mean uh, for distributions like this software choice isn't very important because you can always put on your own software on top of it um but yeah oh it comes with that's an unusual choice it comes with dosbox well fair enough uh screenshot applications mt paint what's droopy Uh, 
Um, oh, I bet maybe that's a server application or something. Um, so it comes. Uh, ooh, it comes with GNOME M player. That's a, it's pretty safe. Middle of the road um, media player works quite nicely. Uh, yeah, Unet boot in there, which uh, just a bit of a fair warning is not a great. Um, it doesn't work on on all distributions using that. Although I don't know if they've improved it lately. I've switched. Well, I just do it from the command line now using DD, and that does the trick. Um, but yeah, this is great. You know, like uh, and, and yeah, I, I I installed KeyPass X just to see how Qt4 out would look, and they look it actually looks fine actually. Um, and it does actually look, and it did look in line with some of the others. But yeah, you I I have noticed that a few of the applications. Um, they do not necessarily uh, look. Uh, this transition transmission. Yeah. Oops. Um, applications internet transmission. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. So, for example, this is a GTK three app, um, and you can see that it uses. Is it the Adwaity theme? And I, so so it's you know like some applications are going to look a little bit different like that, um, and some will use the GNOME three file selection tool which I despise, uh, but have to live with. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so yeah, it's not like it's not the prettiest looking distribution. It's not the ugly. Like I keep, I keep saying, it's not the prettiest. Like as if if that's a, a uh, like a serious criticism of it. Uh, multiple desktops. IWM is great. JWM is great. Uh, Fluxbox is fine. Um, yeah, this is a nice little gem. If you guys have got you know an hour or two spare and you want to throw on something interesting in a virtual machine, have a look at this. The the, the design philosophy is interesting. Um, and the you know the the user interface. Um, you know the way how they've set stuff up is it's it's. It's not copying other distributions. It's it's doing it its its own way, but um, but it's it seems um, at least to 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 a Linux user such as myself, um, every bit as straightforward and easy. So um, so I got a, I got yeah I, I think I might um, I might try this on a on a on a piece of low end hardware and see where I get with it because it's uh, it's it's fast. It's incredible. I mean, look, I've I've dedicated this virtual machine four gigs of RAM. And it's using 328, and it has, um, you know, obviously that's going to shoot up once I start visiting some, uh, you know, YouTube videos and stuff like that. Uh, it's not using any swap, and it's using two and a half gigs of disk space. So, that's, and it comes with Conky in the corner as well. Look at that! How neat is that? Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. But thanks very much for uh, watching. Um, certainly a nice little hidden gem there. Uh, I usually go to Puppy. I usually go straight to Puppy Linux if I need something that lightweight. But this, this, this might change the game. So anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.